everybody, and welcome to another episode of Haunt Talk. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, the things we like and dislike the most um, in haunted houses, like the elements, if you will, which is kind of like a coaster term, you know, for your like your loop de loops and all of your fun coaster things. But in haunted house terms, this is meaning like things like vortex tunnels or like, you know, just like things that make up the haunted house. Yeah. How interactive the actors are, all that kind of thing. So we have a list of our favorite things and our least favorite things. And we're also very curious. We're hoping that we get some comments in the comment section letting us know what you guys, like your favorite thing you see in haunted houses and your least favorite things. Yes. It can even be super specific, like, oh, there was this one really cool element. And maybe we'll talk about that as we think about them throughout the video. Mm -hmm. We like to kind of make these unscripted because um, I think it's a little more fun that way. Yeah. Um, also, if you watch a lot of our episodes, you probably noticed that we've changed up our set quite a bit. So this is going, this should be, we might add a couple things. I don't know. This should be like our set for this season of Haunt Talk. Yeah. We got the pumpkins back that we've had um, from past year. Kim has also made these really cool candles. Um, those are cool. We have a small one in front if you're listening in podcast form, because I probably will upload this in podcast. You should go watch the video. And these couple blow molds. I really like these blow molds. These actually aren't old. Um, you found them where? I found them at Mark's. Yeah. If you're from Ohio, it's the Mayfield Road Marks. It's the only one so far that I've found that actually has these. So they're super cool. I love them. Now, this guy does light up, but I'm going to turn it on just for a second. The eyes are so insane. Oh, yeah. Look at him. <laughs> look at him in the camera. There is no way it's I can have crazy. this on. So no he's, way. yeah. So unfortunately, he's not that seeable. So I might do something to make him more. But uh, yeah, what do you think of our, of our new little set? We also have a little bit darker in here to make it more spooky. Yeah. So yeah. But. A little more of a relaxed episode. We're just going to kind of, you know, ramble on. We're, we are kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here because <laughs> there's no haunts open yet. We're like, we want to make haunt talk videos. We're going to Universal. Well, this won't this won't be coming out to a couple of days before we go. But mm -hmm. right now it's a Sunday and we leave week plus one day Yeah. Um, for Universal. So we are super excited to go there. The haunt Yay. lineup and that they finally announced the haunt lineup and uh, the scare zones. Yeah. The, the, the uh, Universal is kind of the inspiration for the whole traditional yes. Halloween theme because it's the 31st year of Halloween Horror Nights and they are going in a more traditional Halloween where they have pumpkins and ghosts and all that fun stuff. So we thought, hey, why don't we do that with us? Because vintage Halloween I stuff love, has, yeah. yeah, it has come back like in like droves and it's it's really awesome so that's kind of what it. we yeah we went decorating shopping some of this stuff's been made again like we said but i just really wanted to kind of have yeah like traditional halloween stuff yeah. and then even like some fall foliage and that mm -hmm. so we removed a lot of like the less traditional stuff and have that in place so hopefully you like that um but yeah i don't know i guess uh we have our wine here it's not just <laughs> water this time Yay! got that so yeah let's 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 uh let's go let's do this um so Let's start with uh, let's start with something a pro that we like uh, that we like in haunts. All right, so um, one of the things that we really like in haunted houses is chainsaws. Yeah, I actually this is a novelty that I actually do like I because even though I mean chainsaws used to freak me out when I was a kid, <laughs> I think the, they don't really freak me out much anymore. But if you go to one that touches you. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many times I've been molested by a chainsaw <laughs> at a certain haunted house. And, um, well, there's a couple of them. I don't even know yeah, which one you're talking about. Haunted Hoochie's really good haunted for Hoochie's it. Haunted Hoochie's really good at that, and Wells Township is very good at yeah, that Wells as well. Yeah, Wells Township is um, really good at that. Yeah, um, but I like it. I think I like it more because I love watching people just run for the hills when they hear the noise. And it's just, it just yes. entertains me so much. I love watching, and that's not on the list, but one thing I do like at, watch, at Haunted Houses is watching other people get scared. Yes. And that's probably the best thing for chainsaws, mm -hmm. because the chainsaw guy usually looks for the person they can see that's making it squir making him squirm, yep. and they go after him. They go after um, him. So there's a lot of traditional things, and what I mean by that is something that's been in Haunted Houses since, like, the first Haunted House. Yeah. That I don't like that much, because I'm like, we've done that enough times, but I think <laughs> chainsaws, because it's a physical thing, no, what I don't like, though, are fake chainsaws. Oh my god! Nothing's more, and I understand not every place. If you're inside, you can't have the fumes, but just don't do a chainsaw. Then do you like an electric like um, drill or just something like yeah. that? But there is nothing more pathetic than like a spirit Halloween goes, brow, brow, and I'm like, <laughs> that just makes me laugh and it takes you out of the experience. Do not use those haunted houses. I usually go, oh, yeah, when it's I like, hear oh, that's it. So, that's so sad. Oh, oh, fake chainsaw. So what's something uh, we don't like? claustrophobia tunnels 
unless... Asterisk. Yeah, there's an asterisk to this one. They are used properly. Yes. Now, what we mean by that is a lot of places throw claustrophobia tunnels in there, just random weird shit places. All the time. And you're like, All the time. this is stupid. Why is this here? Um, I like... We've two instances, and I don't recall where the one was, but um, I know Dent Schoolhouse actually had a half yeah. claustrophobia tunnel with body parts on top of it and you had to walk through the body parts and I thought that was very innovative mm -hmm. and then another place and I do not recall where this was used it in their laser swamp there's been a couple now Erebus had a really good one where they did this um, if you remember oh yeah um, there's been a couple that's done this though I actually think Ghoul Brothers does this they do this with the crocodile there you, you push yes. your way through and they yes. have it um, so I have seen that um, and I guess I don't think we have it on the list, but I do actually like laser swamps. I do think they're a little overused. Yeah. But I do like them. I think they're cool. And when they're used right, it's a it's a really good way to scare you because you know that there's someone under there, but you mm -hmm. can't see it. Yeah. But the ones that suck are like the ones where they don't put in a fog and mm -hmm. it's just, you can see them you and it's just, the you're person. like, oh, you're this is like... sad. Um, but yeah, claustrophobia tunnels, they are just used as like a thing, which just like another element we're going to talk about here in a little bit, where I feel like haunted houses will. They, they are a pretty big space taker and mm -hmm. they just throw them in there just for something to push your way through. Yeah. And that's it. It's also kind of gross. Um, I've never been one to like be super freaked about, but like so many people push their way through that, and it's mm -hmm. just ew. I usually, when I go through one, I do this. Yeah. And push, so I have like that space between exactly. me and the claustrophobia tunnel, so I'm not actually touching the. An another reason. Or another reason I, I do not like them um, is their choke points. So what happens a lot of times mm. is you won't be catching up with someone, but then people don't understand the claustrophobia tunnel. They get freaked out by them, and so they'll just stop. Yeah. And then there's like a hundred people will be piled up. I believe it was Fear Columbus. They had yes. like a maze of claustrophobia tunnels. Mm -hmm. And it just became a clusterfuck of being like caught up oh with a t multiple families. And then it ruined the remainder of the haunt. I think that one is almost over, but like. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah, cause they're not scary. They're just, they're, they're just kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing scary about just pushing your way through two airbags. There's nothing mm -hmm. scary about that. <laughs> um, so yeah. Half the half ones, or if they're used correctly, which mainly, in my opinion, is only for the half ones because it kind of gives you this like feeling like you're wading through something. Yeah. But yeah, the full body ones, not not about that life. So back to the pros. Uh, one of our favorite things is originality in haunted houses. That means coming up with a theme that I've never seen before. Exactly. Or taking a theme and just turning it on its axis and just making it just totally different and new. Yeah. We love that stuff. Love it. Um, uh, case in point, one of the haunted houses, uh, 100 Acre Manor, that we always usually go with the beginning of the year because yep. they're always like one of the first ones to open. Yep. <laughs> um, that one year they had a Yeti haunted house. And it was just really original and unique. And uh, uh, the only other place we ever saw Yetis was at Universal. Um, which was like two years prior to that. So it was actually nice to see another house do something different yeah. like that, do a different monster like that. Right, because I haven't seen another place do a Yeti besides no. Universal and 100 Acre. Yeah. And, and I implore you, even if you don't plan on going to Universal this year, to just look up the house lineup. And I think that a lot of haunts could really learn from what they do, because since they do 10 haunts every year, they really have to think outside of the box. Yeah. And not so much traditional stuff like the one where it's like 1950s, like it's set in the 1950s, like a, it was like a bug exterminator company or something like that, and things go wrong. And so like, it's all this like stuff is like ran over by bugs and, and things like that, or like Dead Man's Wharf, which is like a, uh, like a, yeah, I don't know exactly what it's about, but it, it's like a cabin in the woods, I think, or something that's kind like of, in like yeah. a frozen, like wasteland kind of thing. And that sounds cool. So I just wish that more places weren't uh, scared to think outside of the box. Yes. And just try more things, you know, because yeah. We're still waiting for yeah. somebody to do a really good alien. Yeah, part so of Hundred a Acre house. Manor always has one that's decent, but like I want one, and it's crazy because that well, is something you think would be more com um, common. And you do yeah. see like an alien scene here and there, but like just make like a really cool like like it, like think of like Alien the movie, like a spaceship. Yeah. Like a cool creepy science fiction like one. And the nice thing about that is I feel like when you think of that kind of like architecture and that design what people think of it's pretty straight lines mm -hmm. not a crazy amount of detail right because of the way because it's very clean i guess yes so i yeah. feel like it wouldn't even be that hard to really design it and make it look realistic yeah um i don't know why we don't see more of that because aliens are one of the scariest things to me as far as movies go but 
yeah, I just want to see more aliens. Also, now is a good time to bring up, if you haven't checked out yet, we do have a merch store um, with our Skull Bulb uh, logo on it. Uh, well, there's a bunch of shirts, things like that. If you'd like to see another line with maybe like some kind of Hanthok logo, let us know. That might be something we can work on if that's something that people would be interested in buying. If we see interest in that, we uh, may do that. Also, make sure to like, subscribe to Patreon. Check that out if you want to help support us. And we also um, have the thing enabled now. It's called a Super Things. It's right under the YouTube video, and you can basically just leave us a tip. Um, so doing that helps us out a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for everyone who does that. If you haven't done it yet, consider it because it helps us because, yeah. You know, we take a good amount of time and money to go to these places and, and, and do these things. So, all right. So that was pro. So let's go on to another con. All right. And this is what I wrote because it's always how he pre- he, he describes it. Oh, God. Stupid air cannons. Yeah. Usually there's another obscenity in there. But yeah. 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 Um, look, I understand. Air cannons are an extremely easy way to scare people. <laughs> And I understand that no haunt's ever going to be done with them, but God, do I hate them. <laughs> um, because it's the cheapest of cheap scares. Yeah. It's just a loud noise, which I already, I also, I don't think what's on the list, but I hate like extremely loud noises mm-hmm. in haunted houses. I understand there's going to be loud noises, but the ones that literally like blow your eardrums out, yeah. it's not scary, it's just painful. And, I, and I'm not a fan of that. And I kind of, air cannons aren't necessarily painful, although I've had a few, like the, that, the, the asshole haunted houses that'll aim it at your face. <laughs> um, oh, I hate air cannons so much. And... I know they're a good way to scare, and I'm okay with one or two here and there, but I'll go to some haunted houses, and it's like every step you take, there's an air can. Mm. And it's like, come yeah. on. Yeah. Like, then it just feels cheap. I, I can't, I'm not going to name any haunted houses, because I don't. I, but I know there's been multiple we've been to where it's just like, it feels like every room there's a freaking air can. It's like, <laughs> it's like no. maybe invest in hiring more actors. I don't know. Yeah. I usually step the over the cans. pads if I see them. It's oh, like, yeah. okay, I've already stepped over like three of these. Come on. Air cannons, I hate them. Yeah. Dislike. Yeah, nope. Not, not for me. All right. Back to pros. We really like, and this kind of goes with the originality as well, but detailed yes. scenes. Yes. We love when people put their heart and souls into the haunted house, and you can tell. Yeah. When they and the room's not just slapped together with like a couple coffins in a corner or something like that, where it's actually got like, you know, drippings or you know some sort of thing somewhere dust that you know they hand put there spider webbing that they actually did you know things like that because like haunting is an art form it Mm -hmm. really truly is and like any haunt that has a big budget can go out and buy the biggest best prop and throw it in a corner but like it seems but not every not everybody has the will or the want to go in and really set dress a scene and really engross you in that atmosphere. Like we talk about Chippewa like Slaughterhouse all the time, but it's like the poster child for detailed haunts. So it's Fear Columbus. There's, there's many of them that are. But these haunts you go in and like, even if you hate being scared, if you somehow leave this place it, and you're not at the very least impressed from the work in the artistry that went into it, mm-hmm. I, I, you're not someone I want to talk to. <laughs> right. I mean, like, like the fact that Chippewa actually made a logo and designed a like a company logo right. for the Carver family business and plastered it all over boxes and crates and things like that, specifically for this haunted house. It's incredible that they actually like took the time to be like, no, let's not just use generic boxes. Let's actually make this design and put it on there so it looks like it's a real company with real shipping stuff. Exactly. It's just, it's fantastic. And I, and I do want to point out that some people will be like, oh, well, not all haunts have a big budget. And I understand that. But also look at haunts like Bloodview. Pretty detailed, and it's nonprofit. Yeah. And they make their stuff. Yeah, a lot it. of their stuff <clears throat> is homemade. Yep, they go for donations. Like, the budget is a good argument for sometimes, like, the giant animatronics and stuff like that. But when it comes to detail, like, you can be creative. Wells Township's another great thing. Yes. Like, they don't, you know, I mean, I'm assuming their budget's a little bit bigger now, but, like, they haven't raised their price in so long. And, like, I mean, you can go watch our documentary if you want to know more, because both actually these two haunts are in there, and it kind of is a good contrast, because so is like Factory of Terror, and yeah. it kind of shows you the contrast from somebody that like spends all of the money, and then like a lower budget haunt to no budget haunt, and that's why we kind of wanted to focus on these yeah. different ones to kind of show the uh, ends of both spectrum. But the thing is, all of them are extremely detailed. Mm-hmm. That just the way they go about making the detail might be different. Right. So yeah. All right, back to the cons. 
the phrases that everybody uses in the haunted houses. Yeah. Like, do you want to play? So this one might be fresh yeah. meat. This one might be a little petty, but yeah. Especially if you're kind of like a haunt enthusiast as we are, and you go to so many haunts, and like, and and you know, and, and every haunt you hear someone go, "Want to play?" And it's just like, think of more creative dialogue. Yeah. Hundred Acre Manor is one that's pretty good about it. They're very good because they'll just at, say at random shit to you sometimes to really throw you off. Yeah, someone like, might jump out of a closet and go pancake, and you're like, yeah, someone yelled like asparagus huh? at me once, and yeah. I'm just like, where the hell did that come from? Like, and I'm not saying every place should just yell random words, but I'm saying like, think of something. Yeah, just be you know, be you creative. Know? Like, like if, even if you are in like a scene where you're like um, a girl with a doll or something like a creepy like haunted doll or something like. You know, maybe don't say like you want to play, like maybe say do you want to meet and like create a creepy name for the thing or something. Yeah. Just be a little bit more inventive, you know? Yeah, want to meet my dolly? Yeah, because that kind of stuff like really that. keeps people in the moment, keeps them in that atmosphere. And it might seem small, and it might seem petty. And I mean, like people saying do you want to play typically doesn't make us like drop them a point and score and we actually give them ratings yeah, and no. stuff. It's you just... know, but I'm just saying like overall it does add to everything. Mm-hmm. Like it sucks like, you know, if you're in like an extremely elaborate haunt, but then the actors just have like no good dialogue or they just go boo and you're like yeah you know eh, just took me out of it just totally took me out yeah. of it you just hanging boo back to prose and this is his word mm-hmm. verticality oh, verticality yeah verticality so what i mean by this uh, it can be a couple ways but i really like when the scares um come from above and below Mm -hmm. it is super effective ghoul brothers is a great one that that kind of does this um halloween horror nights also has been very good at this in the past so like a lot of people are like expecting things to like come from here and there but when things come from above and below um that it it is so much more effective and it really kind of keeps you constantly looking um it was funny i was watching um it's a great youtube channel the grim life collective they went and they toured this haunted house i forget which it was but oh my god the haunt looks amazing and i want to go there so bad (laughs) Um, uh, but the way this guy likes to design things is he likes to design things up to make the people look up because it's amazing and then scares come from here because the most protected part of any human body is the throat and when people scare you in this direction while you're looking up you get like pretty much that's when you get that I don't like that panic inducing like Mm. like not a scream but the gasps oh yeah and when I hear like them talk about that I'm like yeah like that's the kind of thinking um, and you know, you don't, and again, this isn't something you have to have a high budget for. Like, this is just like creative thinking and placement of things. Yeah. Um, you know, just having like vertical scares, not just people coming out from one way. Because, like, the first time someone gets scared from above, you're going to be freaked out the entire time. You're like, okay, so where, where's the character? Well, you know, where's it going to come from? <laughs> um, and also by verticality, if aunts can do it, I do like it when they have like little things that might make you kind of go up a little ramp, mm-hmm. not just always even pavement because it kind of yeah. throws you off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, the houses that have the tilt rooms where like your weight basically tilts the room. Um, yeah. Akron Schoolhouse is one of the, one of the first ones that ever had that. Is it's basically you walk into this room and as more weight gets put on this side of the room, yeah. the room actually pops up. And like speaking that. of verticality, they're actually pretty good for it too. I don't know if they yeah. still have it, but I know before they got bought out, um, they had that one scare where like literally the floorboard would open up and someone would pop out of the floor and like this oh, in the yeah. one. So that's you know kind of what yeah. I mean is another example. Yeah. But all right, so there's another pro for you. Now what about another con? Uh, another con. Vortex tunnels. Yeah, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one, I don't think, but I personally think vortex tunnels are used up. They're just a big spinny tunnel that takes up, like, almost two haunt, two, like, entire what could be scene rooms Yeah. for just a thing that makes you feel spinny. For people that don't go to haunts a lot, I assume it is a pretty big attraction everyone likes. Like, ooh, I still see people when we go, like, falling over and freaking I out. Know. I, I actually don't even hold the handles anymore. We've been to so many. It's in, like, every <laughs> haunt. Now, Kim does really like, if you ever go to a hay, there is a couple of them now, but a hay ride that has one that takes yes. an entire tractor through, that's pretty wicked. That's pretty fun because you can't control yeah. what's happening because you're sitting on a giant hay wagon and then this thing is tilt, is spinning, and it feels like the whole hay wagon is just tilting with it. And it it's freaky as all heck. But I, I don't know. I'm just so immune to on being in haunted houses now that it's yeah. just kind of like, yeah, come up with something else. Yeah, it just, like I said, I see them in almost every single haunt we go to. Even yeah. the best of the best, I see them, and it's just like, I just feel like it could be something more inventive than a big spinning tunnel you walk through. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 
Um, or make it like a themed. Usually it's in a clown area or something like yeah, it's that. It's usually black. Make black. it like a themed one. Like I would love to see one that's um well, actually Castle Noel, which is mm-hmm. essentially a Christmas haunted house. Yeah, now there's no scares about the spooky in it. Yeah. stuff. But they have a vortex tunnel that's actually a blizzard tunnel. And it's themed to be that you're walking through this yeah. blizzard. I would love to see that in a ha- haunted house or have it like a tornado. Yeah, or I've that seen... That would be really cool. There's um, a haunted house that we're not allowed to name, but one year they... Um, <laughs> one year, because they have a bunch of haunted houses, um, they had like a themed vortex tunnel for each one, so like the butcher shop themed one would be like body parts and blood. Ooh. And then like one that was like a mausoleum was like bones all over it. And that <laughs> was actually kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Vortex tunnels. Eh. All right, back to the pros. Uh, interactive actors. Yeah. We love when people just get really into it and just they'll talk to you, they'll like pull you into a scene, you know, they're just really get you involved in the haunted house and they're not just there standing in a corner going boo or, yeah. you know, they're actually like telling you a story. Yeah, I really like that. Now, obviously, this one's going to be dependent on what the haunted house is yeah. aiming for but I mean I really do like the ones where they you get to like be kind of like intimate with the actor meaning like mm-hmm. you're held in that scene like Wells Township is probably the best example for this yeah because it's a stop and go like you go into a scene stop the actors interact with you and you go not every haunt's going to be set up like that right but we do really like that and we do like where like the actors will kind of follow you for a little bit mm-hmm. if it's a house that touch you know they kind of you know they mess with you that kind of thing yeah um because you can kind of tell if the person there is, is, is actually wants to be there, which most haunts they do because not that many haunts pay. And if they do pay, it's not a ton of money. Mm-hmm. So they're not there for the money. They're there because they, they want to scare people. Right. So, you know, you're, you're there and you probably want to be there. So <laughs> scare people, interact with them, freak them out. <laughs> Some of it comes down to training as well. Like, you know, you got to actually train your actors. Not everyone is like, you know, going to come in and know what to do. Right, so, right. But, yeah. All right, back to cons. Um, we hate when people have um, filler spots. What we mean by that is like black blackout mazes. Yeah. Or, you know, just a, a dark room or just like stupid stuff that doesn't need to be there. Exactly. I think one of the biggest, no, I, they've gotten better at this. Um, and I, I really like them, but Factory of Terror. Hmm. It's really, uh, this was a big thing in Factory of Terror. There was a couple spots, and they've gotten better, but it was like they wanted to be the longest haunted house. And you'll notice <laughs> this for ones that they're just doing it because they want to be able to say, oh, our haunted house is over 30 minutes or whatever. Right. So they'll add just a bunch of, like, switchbacks in darkness, a lot of times with no actors. And it just takes right. you out of it. Like, you're going through all these amazing scenes. You're going through a swamp, a graveyard, you know, a dot, whatever it is. Like, whatever you're going through. And all of a sudden, now you're just in complete darkness. There's not really many scares happening. Mm-hmm. Let's get rid of it. It'd be better, honestly, if it was a shorter. Just go right to the next scene. Yeah. Um, I I mean, I will admit that, like, the blackout sections do sometimes freak me out, especially if there actually are actors in yes. it. So, like, if you are doing actors and you're actually making, like, use of it, like, like for example, like, I've been to some that, like, people have masks on that can light up and all of a sudden um, they'll light up the mask in front of your yeah. face. That kind of stuff is okay. Yeah. But it's just the empty switchbacks of black to add time to your haunt. Yes. I not okay with that i just it's it just slows down the haunt and takes you out of the experience (laughs) all right so now that we talked about our filler spots in that let's go ahead and talk about a pro again pro good costuming again it's something that just helps with your scenes with your actors just putting somebody in a black suit just doesn't do anything but if they're in like a really cool outfit that actually like blends in with the the scene love it absolutely love it and it doesn't have to be super elaborate if you don't have the budget for it but just at least try to put some effort into it right like even if like you know just when you go to like spirit and you just buy like the most basic halloween mask and they're just a mask on you can like clearly see they're like wearing a hoodie like a branded hoodie and stuff like that which we do see that places Mm -hmm. like don't do that yeah you know at least go and get like a black hoodie or something or something or a black t-shirt like you can go to like a a thrift store and buy you know t-shirts and things like that for like 
dirt, dirt yeah. cheap. And it's especially important if you are an interactive haunt. If you're just one where people go, ah, you know, whatever, and just more about scaring you, mm-hmm. it's not as big of a deal. But if it's one where, like, you see the actor for a long time, make sure they're costumed well. Yeah. Or it's just going to be distracting. It's hard to take someone serious when they're wearing, like, street clothes that you might be wearing. <laughs> like, no, yeah. Which, again, seems like obvious things. But they are things that we see, like, mm-hmm. not that uncommonly. Yeah, surprisingly. Uh, All right, back to cons. Clowns. Yeah, so... <laughs> and I get it. A lot of people have a fear of clowns, so they're never going to go away. I don't have a fear of clowns, and I've seen the clown theme done so many times, and it's done more often than not poorly. Yeah. Now I have seen good ones. You know, like Dent has a good like clown thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Haunted Hoochie, the second thing they have, is actually kind of fun. That I kind of refer to as a palate cleanser yeah. compared to the actual haunt. <laughs> but overall, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... It's so overdone, and it's like I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't scare me anymore. And yeah, it just does. It feels so overdone, and I'm like, I just yeah. If you're someone that goes to haunts at all, it's like, oh great, here comes the clown scene, and it's just like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I get a kick out of watching people who are terrified of clowns go through the clown scenes because they yeah. are just absolutely terrified. But it's like. Yeah, they're not doing anything for me. Sorry. Yeah, so this is more of, I guess, a personal taste. Yeah. Um, and I'm okay with it if they're actually doing the clown scenes well, but it seems like the clown haunt in every in like, every place, especially, so, like, here's a good example. Like, if you go to, like, a, like, um, what do you want to call it? Like, a Scream Park style thing. Yeah. The clown house is almost always the worst because it's almost always, like, a 3D paint. So it's just black walls with paint on it with glasses, yeah. and there's clowns in there very rarely do you see like cool set pieces like even land of illusion like land of illusions actually isn't that bad yeah but it's probably one of the lesser ones like there's less detail and it is it's mm-hmm. it's more just black walls and there are some things in there so like yeah eh. i do remember um back when uh fear experience used to be around they actually had a pretty cool clown area. Yeah. It was like a carnival area. Yeah. And they had that like was the, actually really good. Yes. Yeah. They had like the big blocks and things like that and carnival settings yeah. and You can it, do it well, yeah. Yeah. You it can. felt like you were at a circus and that made sense because Yeah, that's haunted where carnival are I think at. is a little bit different. Like, yeah, you'll yeah. have clowns and carnies and stuff there, but we're talking more about just like the here's a bunch of clowns because clowns are scary. Yeah. And that's like basically it. Mm. Yeah. All right, back to pros. Um, so this is going to be a exception one as well, um, and we're going to go to that when we get to cons. But we like when haunted houses <laughs> have okay, yeah, yeah. bars. Yeah, so this has been something I feel like that's gotten more and more popular. Yes. Like, it always used to be like, you know, you can't enter if you've had, like, things to drink and mm-hmm. stuff. Not most haunts. Factory of Terror, literally, it, it's like halfway through because they have through. multiple haunts but you don't get to choose in what order right um but halfway through there's a bar and it's a really cool themed bar yeah and you can get there before you go to the last two haunts so it's literally in the middle of the haunt where you can go <laughs> get alcohol yeah and a lot of places are doing that nowadays um it's a good money maker it is a very good money maker i mean you tap a keg and oh, yeah you're good to go, you know? Because, I mean, like, you even look at, like, I mean, when we went to SeaWorld, you know, it was their first haunt event. They had, they had like, a oh cart there pushing around jello shots and, like, um, shot syringes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they would just, you just buy them and just shoot and do shots while you're in line for the haunt. And that one was just all about the alcohol. Like, oh my I, gosh. I don't they think. They tried their best to get you drunk. I want to say, as many garbage cans as Disney World has, <laughs> they had places you could get alcohol at SeaWorld. Oh, my. There are so <laughs> it was many. Crazy. And I'm curious to see because we're going to Bush Gardens for the first time this year. If it's like that, because you know, yeah. SeaWorld owns Bush Gardens, yeah. Um, so I'm real curious to see that. But yeah, um, I like it. Typically, I don't get much. Maybe I'll get one or two drinks. But we're mm-hmm. usually going to multiple haunts. Yeah. And we don't. A lot of times they're not that close, so we don't want to like get like drunk or anything. But once mm-hmm. in a while, we'll have like one or something, you know, yeah. just to, just because. Um, but I do like that option, and I do like how much profit it brings a lot of these places. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they're doing, like, fun, creative cocktails, I find that to be more fun. Now, when we yes. do go to, like, the theme park cons, we do usually drink there. Yeah. Because we're just kind of there. Especially in Florida, because we're not driving anywhere. We're we not just, driving We have to anywhere. do it. We don't have a car, so. To, yeah. Uh, well, we might have to drive when we go to... We don't know what we're doing for Bush Gardens yet. Should we take an Uber all the way from Orlando to Tampa, or should we rent a car? We don't know what to do. So let us know in the comments if you've ever done that, and what we should do. If we should rent a car, or if we should do an Uber. We're not sure which will be better. Yeah. 
Yeah, we need to figure that out. But anyways, um, now let's go into the cons, which I'm assuming we're going to... We are. We're, uh, like I said, this is a two-parter kind yeah, so of let's thing. Go to we that like one, yeah. the pro with the bars, but we aren't a huge fan of the drunk people yeah. it creates. So, unfortunately, some people are already obnoxious. Yes. When you put alcohol in them, they become super, uber, super obnoxious. Ugh. So much so. I I recall an instance when we were at Fright Farm. This was years ago, by the this way. This was years ago. Fright Farm was one of the first ones that actually, like, allowed alcohol and stuff. Because they actually have, like, where you can rent tents. And it's I think it's BYOD, and I think it yeah. still is. But some yeah. party basically got really drunk, and there was a guy who, um, I think he threw a, a bottle or something at the person that let you on the hayride. He threw corn. Oh, okay. That was the corn. first instance. That's, yeah, it was corn. I'm that, sorry. It was corn. He threw the corn at the guy who was loading the hay wagons, and then the guy who was loading the hay wagons decided he wasn't loading any more hay wagons for like a half hour. We were sitting there just while. waiting. Yeah. Um, but the other instance was we were actually in their. Um, they have uh, a maze that was in there, and um, these drunk girls kind of latched oh, yeah. on to our group oh my gosh yeah and they were well you could tell they were drunk it was oh they were like they were like hanging on him yeah. and they were just they were so obnoxious it was so bad but this also atlanta illusion also serves like they they have a big bar there and stuff and yes. i know we ran into some people that were really drunk on yeah. the land illusion a couple of years ago so i mean again we liked that it's there um people are going to be people though yeah i just kind of wish that people could be more responsible when it comes to that kind of thing and just right. not drink to the point where they're going to be blubbering idiots but i don't <laughs> think i don't think that haunts should stop doing it because no. or people will just get drunk elsewhere so you might as well make money off of it it's not something we're saying haunts shouldn't do because mm -hmm. i do like it but like i do think that you should keep tabs on people like once they have two or three maybe like no like have like a limit for the amount you yeah. like serve people maybe make everyone wear a wristband and like check i, mark I was just gonna say that get. like maybe have like a punch wristband or something or um what again we went to um bush gardens and we did a um wine tasting and there was three stops on the wine tasting and the wristband they gave me had mm -hmm. three yeah, things yeah. on there do something like that yeah, do something like that where you get a wristband and you're only allowed to get three drinks and once you're out of that you don't get anything else yeah. that actually would be very yeah smart. i think that would be um, let's see, how many more pros, how many more cons do we uh, have? Uh, we have two more pros and three, three cons. cons. So let's go ahead, um, we'll do one more con, so I'll take this one. Um, so, <laughs> one con, and this is less about the actual haunt experience itself, is when a haunt is ran by asshole owners. Now, I'm not going to name any names, um, because, yeah, God forbid, but there's been... <laughs> haunts that we have given unfavorable reviews to that freak out even threaten to sue because we did a review now i mean obviously freedom of speech you're allowed to do reviews yes. on things if it's slander that's one thing but if you're just giving an honest review mm -hmm. it's not like we were targeting anyone and you know you know whatever we we definitely try and like in the past i will admit that, that sometimes we got a little maybe tooth scathing we got a little too passionate about things we definitely try if we go to some place that we aren't happy with we, you know, we try to, I don't know if sure could, so like be honest, but be less intense with the way that we word things. Yeah. Um, but I've had haunts message me and say, if you come here, we're basically going to like berate you. We're not going to let you in. We haven't even done reviews on them, but they don't like reviewers. And so they will basically message reviewers. And we're not the only ones. We've talked to other reviewers and they will like essentially threaten you. Yeah. Not like to harm you, but like. They literally threw one of the, they wouldn't even let him yes. get on the property. They threw him out. And again, I'm not going to say the haunt's name because I don't want any drama, but the like, space person basically had told me that if you come here, because I've said, <coughs> I didn't even realize I was talking to the owner person until we looked it up. I thought it was just some random person. <laughs> and they're, I'm like, well, you know, we're just, there. it'll probably be a good review anyways. Like, we're going to go. And they're like, okay, well, you can come here and find out. And I'm like, excuse me? Wow. Yeah. So yeah. if you own a haunt and you are like that, um, I don't know what's wrong with you. You must have no faith in your product at all. If you are that scared of a bad review from a couple people online, like maybe you're in the wrong business. Yeah. Like, just honestly grow up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's my piece on that. Most haunt owners are amazing people, I will say. We've had very little bad experiences, way more positive experiences than negative. But the negative experience we have had, the people just come across as really awful. But I guess to even start that conversation in the first place, you have to not be a great person yeah um so yeah 
just if, you, if, if you're some, and I doubt that anything that anyone is going to be watching this video that is a bad haunt owner, because most people that actually watch our channel are pretty awesome people. Um, like I said, overall, the people that run haunts are just really passionate, artistic, mm -hmm. amazing people, but yeah. Um, and actually, a lot of the haunted houses that we've gone to, the owners have actually messaged us and said that they appreciate our right. honesty when we give our reviews because right. some, we never we never try and be unfair like yeah and, and and again we've mentioned many times before even if we've had here we understand the budgets are different than uh, every yes. haunt's going to be able to be this amazing extravagant thing you know yeah. um we take that into consideration there's just there's, there's so many facets that we take in when we give a review um so if we give something a bad review it is because you know we really feel it's improvement and we hope that they won't that if when the haunt sees it if they do see it because we typically do message our reviews to the places sometimes we let them know that we're coming um sometimes we, we don't always message places because we don't always know exactly where we're going we're not like we're not sure all the time if we can make it to as many haunts as we want um you know we don't mean it to be like something to put people down like the haunt owners or the haunt staff, we, you know, we mean it, it's more of like a coaching almost, you know, think yeah. of that um, as to be like, this is what we liked and this is what we didn't like. And if they care about what we didn't like, maybe they'll <laughs> fix it. Maybe they just disagree with us because everything's a matter of opinion as well. Right. If you think we're wrong, that's fine. It's not like what we say is correct per se. Right. It's our opinion. It's our, opinion. It's our review. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like any review, just like a movie review. You might watch, I mean, it happens to me all the time. I watch a movie review. One person says, oh my God, this movie was terrible. And another person said, oh my God, I loved it. And, you know, just like anything in yeah. life. But yeah, so that's that. Um, <laughs> it's just, we've never really mentioned it much in the videos. And I'm like, well, this is a good place to just kind of talk about that. And yeah, I just, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> all right, so back into the positives. Um, one of the things that we really like of her haunted houses in when it, is when they have the queued entries or timed entries. Yes. We really like that. Um, it's nice to actually know, hey, get here at this time and you're going to get in that place instead of having to stand around and stuff like that. Um, some places, for example, that do that, like a lot of places nowadays, um, due to, you know, um, the current situation a lot of places took on to the timed yes. tickets and stuff like that but other places have been actually doing like queued up lines and stuff like yeah, that for so a while better. um for example wells township when you get there and you get your ticket you get a number say you get number 13 um they have a big number thing up on the building yep. and when your number goes up on there you go to the front of the building and you go into the haunted Which house but they have a place where you can just hang out and chill until then. And you're not just standing in a queue line going back right. and forth until it's your turn to go into the haunted house, which we really enjoy. Yeah, and now not every house, well, never at every haunt will be able to do this because yeah. some haunts are real small locations, so there's no room for people to gallivant around. But if you do have the room to do it, it's it's a win-win. Um, yes. Because, yeah, Terratown, I know, is another really like big one. We haven't been there yes. yet, but we do plan on actually going this year. Yes. Um, still think I'm too much of a pussy to do the red band thing, but uh, <laughs> we're going to go at least do the base experience. We'll see. Um, I, I just hope that we get someone in our group that does do the red band because I want to see someone else get like pummeled with blood and buried and stuff yes. like that. I just don't know if I, I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think do I want to do that. But uh, yeah, anyways, though, is it such an ingenious thing? Because not only is it better for the consumer, you give someone that, they're waiting in line for an hour or so. They're, uh, oh, and Fright Farm does this now too. They don't have a queue. They have a little queue now. They have a little queue, but yeah. But you wait and it's only like a 10 minute wait yeah. for the thing. But you get to go. So they, what do people do? Oh, they go to the gift shop. They spend more money. Mm -hmm. They go to the food vendor. They spend more money. Like you let people not be in line, they're just gonna go spend more money. Yeah, <laughs> like, like some places have like games that you can play. Yeah, Fright Farm does that as well. Spend they even money have like there. little mini escape yeah, rooms you can do. Yeah, little mini escape yeah. rooms. It's just, it's real. And then a lot of these places are calling them midways. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually pretty ingenious to have that because then you have, you know, something for these people to occupy their time before it's time to go into the haunted house. And they're just not standing there going, oh, are we getting in yet? You know, it's been an hour. Instead, they're over here, you know. Yeah looking at stuff or playing a game or something like that and they're they're having more fun yeah exactly so i mean and you're making more money and we have it on the cons i don't think we're going to talk about but the con is just standing in a basic line yeah so oh this is kind of just lumped into that but yeah i mean just yeah if you can <laughs> do it and if you do have to do lines like try and try and at least have one or two cue actors mm -hmm. to make the line go faster because yes. again not every place can do this i understand that but if you do yeah. have the room i think it's better for the people and it's going to make you more money if you just offer little things yeah for people to spend their money on right 
because like once you're done with the haunt, most people just go right to the car. But if they're allowed to frolic around while they're waiting, yeah. what else is there to do besides sit? They're gonna they're gonna go and look at things and yeah. maybe find something they wouldn't have normally. Because I'll be honest, a lot of times if we're trying to go to multiple places in one night, I don't really look at the gift shop afterwards. Not that often. No. But if I have to, if I can go look at it while I'm just waiting and then I'm gonna wait anyways, then I will. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, let's see. Um, so let's do, so we have one more con, then one more pro, right? Yes. So let's do our last con. All right. So our last con for the evening is making us eat gross things. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know we haven't done many that do this. And we've said before that we're, now some people might like this. We just don't like the crazy intense haunts. We like, we like haunts that touch, um, but we don't like um, ones that, just put things in your th mouth and like force feed you stuff. Yeah, no, um, that is yeah. not for us. We don't. That's not scary. It's just disgusting. I mean, I guess it's scary in a way because it's an invasion of your privacy. Yeah, but I just don't touch me. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And I, and you know, and I mean, I know haunts are going to continue to do that. And as long as it's an option that I don't have to do if I want to go to the haunt, yeah. it's fine. But ew, <laughs> it's just something that we don't like. It's, you know, it's more of a personal <laughs> taste. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I mean, we don't like being, we don't like eating gross things. So don't try and make us or make us, because ew. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So our last pro of the evening, and he actually mentioned it, is we like when places have touch yeah, passes. Exactly. It just adds an extra scary element to the haunted house, because you might have, um, and we actually talked about this. Um, in our last video about the scariest ones is Blood Prison, for example. When you walk through there and you don't have the touch pass, it's okay. It's, it's, it's good. It's just the touch pass adds a certain element to it to just make it go like way beyond. And it just, it does. It actually adds an extra element to the haunted house. You, sometimes um, the haunts have where you see secret rooms that aren't normally for the regular people or you get to be part of a scene with the touch pass things like that and i we just really like that and you know yeah. not necessarily going to do it every single time case in point with terror town we're not really sure now terror town i'm that. pretty sure does offer three they offer no they offer the red band which is touch and blood and they offer i think it's a gold one which is like the most intense where they're going to like that's when they'll like bury you and do all that kinds of crazy stuff yes. terror town the only thing that's extra with theirs is like you will get blood on you because that's like their big shtick is they blood you up yeah but I do, if you're a haunt that's going to do, like, the force feeding and, like, the extra stuff, like, bearing you and that kind of weird stuff, I think that maybe that should be an additional tier. Yeah. But, yeah, for anyone that can do it, because I know that some they can't because, like, insurance and stuff in your certain, like, county or whatever might be weird. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I understand you can't. But if you're able to, it's a pretty big draw. Because yeah. people that might not normally come because they're only looking for the most intense experience, if they know that you offer a more intense experience... You know, they may come and you can upcharge for it. Yeah. I prefer it when the places do like Eastern State, at least Eastern State used to. I don't know if it's still free or it would just be like, hey, do you want to do this one or do this or not? Yeah. That's like the preferred method is when you don't have to pay just for actors to interact with you more. But yeah. I understand like, hey, if you want to do it, we're going to charge you more for it. I mean, I, I guess it's fine to do that, I think, as um, long as you're not charging like a lot more. Yeah. Or the places that actually charge to not get touched. And they give you the, the boo passes where the it basically signifies that the t the the actors are supposed to leave you alone. Oh, I've seen the leave it alone. I don't think yeah. I've seen where you pay to not get touched. But I know Cedar Point does that. Like if you're bringing yeah. kids to the the haunt, which I don't understand why you would. You can like buy them the necklace so they don't get scared. Yeah. Which, whatever. But why are yeah. they there? <laughs> so um, this video ended up being longer than I anticipated it to be. But yeah, I feel like it was a fun like discussion. And again, let us know in the comments you know, what you think. Um, again, make sure you like, subscribe, and Kim's favorite time. Also, make sure you ring the notification bell. Pumpkin! So you don't miss any future upcoming videos because there will be a lot of reviews. Probably the next videos that we upload will be like our Halloween Horror Nights videos. All of that kind of stuff. And then after that will be like our more normal haunt reviews that are a bit more local and all that kind of stuff. So... Thank you very much for watching, yep. and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.